Rebecca Long Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A number of industry voices have welcomed this announcement, and as Unite the Union commented today, British steel workers and those in the supply chain will be breathing a sigh of relief at this loan. However, it is regrettable that the government's handling of the Brexit negotiations have brought us to this point. The government had been warned about the uncertainty over the EU ETS for over two years, and the Prime Minister's threats of a no-deal Brexit for over two years caused significant uncertainty for the steel sector. UK Steel, the body representing the sector, warned in January that a no-deal Brexit was nothing short of a disaster for the sector, but despite the warnings, the Prime Minister ploughed on, and the risks and viability of our manufacturing sector have been plain to see. This has had an impact on British industry as they continue to fight off uncertainty, which is why it's imperative that we continue in this House working cross-party for a solution that I know will reach a consensus, and I know the Secretary is committed to this. But the Secretary must also note that this is part of a long track record of this Government standing by as our manufacturing sector faces increasing pressures, both domestically and internationally. When Donald Trump imposed a 25% tariff on our steel, the government's response was lukewarm at best, and the refusal for Theresa May to fight for the sector was telling. The government's trade bill is set to make the sector even more vulnerable to steel dumping. They have been woefully silent on the steel sector deal proposals from industry and unions on the issues that are stifling competition, such as electricity prices, where UK industries pay up to 50% extra than their European counterparts. And the Trade Remedies Authority has been described by the MTRA as possibly the weakest in the world. Can the Secretary therefore provide some clarity for the steel sector today by describing the measures his Government will take to ensure that the UK's low-carbon infrastructure, like offshore wind turbines and all the projects, as, such as the Royal Navy's new fleet solid ships, will be built using UK steel? Can he confirm what action he is taking on publishing a steel sector deal and incentivising both public and private investment in the sector? And can he also confirm what action he is taking on business rates and energy costs right across the sector? Now, Mr Speaker, this is welcome news, but as I've said, it's not enough on its own to provide the certainty and assurances that workers and businesses right across the steel sector need. I know the Secretary shares my belief that steel is one of the jewels in the crown of British manufacturing, and I hope he can assure the House today that this is just the first step in a long list of policies dedicated to supporting the sector going forward.